Hello, my name is Will Carmack and I did the motion graphics for Michelle Carre's new YouTube video. It was my job to make animations that represented all the different options a president would have during a nuclear crisis situation. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an After Effects and give you an overall breakdown on how I made these motion graphics. It's gonna be a blast. And also, I'd like to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. The reference material I was sent for this animation is like a scanner. So where I got all my assets is Adobe Stock, because I actually have a subscription to this, but you could also find everything I'm looking for here on Google. In Adobe Stock, some keywords that I would use would be grunge and then scanner. And you'll get all sorts of different options, but I was looking for stuff kind of like this. So you can see here, I'm rolling through all the different assets that I ended up downloading for this project. And the background that I was really, that I thought would be perfect was this one right here. So if you open up After Effects, we'll bring this in there to create our juicy background. And we're gonna do this for every piece I drag into this, but we're going to make it a 3D layer. So I'll scale it down to be cool, love that. And then to add some texture to this background, I wanted to get some like scanned PDFs to make it look like there's some papers on top of the scanner. I thought this was pretty clever. I ended up just looking up on Google, scanned government papers. And eventually you'll find some random website like this that has a bunch of scanned documents from like a presidential campaign. And in Adobe Acrobat, you can open up a PDF and export every single page as a JPEG. And I would do that and it would leave me with all of these separate individual JPEGs. And what's great about them being black and white, so I can bring one of these into After Effects like this, you can change the blending mode to multiply and then everything that's white disappears. It's only showing the darkest parts of this. So now in After Effects, I can flip this like 180 degrees, put it like, put it like right here to give this background some texture. I'll drop in another scanned PDF and blending mode, set it to multiply. And then I played around with it until I found like a nice vibe for like a scannery background. And then in the effects and presets, there's an effect called camera lens blur that I would throw on to both of these so they don't distract from what I'm eventually gonna put in the foreground. You could even lower the opacity a little bit if you want them to be more subtle. And a little touch that I gave the background in the animations I made for uh, Michelle is I went to layer, new, and solid. And what I'm gonna do is create a flickering vignette because you can see in the animations, the background has a little bit of detail with this flickering black border. It just adds to that like grungy, presidential, old school look. So what we're gonna do with this is we'll grab our ellipse tool and I'll start in the center. If you hold down control, it'll just grow bigger from the center. So I'll do this, drop down the masking menu and hit subtract and feather it up. I'll lower the opacity a lot. So now you can see this is how much the vignette is like affecting the background. So if I hold alt and click on opacity, so I'll type in wiggle five comma five. So it's gonna flicker five times with the opacity difference of five. It's subtle, but you can tell now the edges have this cool flickery background look. So now that we have a juicy looking background, we wanna build our main asset, which is the folder. I went back to Adobe Stock and I just typed in folder. And you can see here that I have lots of folders I could choose from. So I picked whatever folder I thought looked best. And here's the one that I'll use for this tutorial. And I used Photoshop to basically make two versions of this folder, the front side of the folder and the inside. To replicate the inside of the folder, I would just make like a big marquee selection and hit fill. And it would give me a really good inside of the folder. So now I can animate this top part to open like a book. I'll bring them into After Effects, turn them into 3D layers. So now with this front folder, what I did is I moved the anchor point all the way to the left side of it. So if I mess around with the Y rotation, it's gonna open up like this, like a book. And now at this point, we wanna start creating like a pair parallax movement and animation. So I'm gonna go to layer, new, and camera. And for this, I'll do the 24 millimeter camera. I'll go to two views in After Effects. So now if I select my camera, we can like move around like this. I linked the two folders together with a null so I could move this in 3D space. Moving the folder forward in 3D space eventually just gives us this nice parallax. So we'll be able to pan from left to right and reveal the folder. So I made each one of the folders in Michelle's video unique. And that's because I went back to Adobe Stock and I downloaded stuff like this, like little stamps and grungy textures that I could then apply on top of the folder. When I got an asset like this where the background is like white and it's not a PNG, there's a pretty easy fix to this. In effects and presets, you can hit type in extract. And what extract does is it lets you get rid of either the dark values, like you can see now only the white is there. Or if you bring down the light values, you'll get rid of all the light pixels in your image. So now I can use the rectangle tool to just isolate 
this here and it's got no background and it's basically a PNG. So one thing I did to make these look cool is if you come down here in the layers panel to track mat, you can link this to the front of the folder and make sure that you turn your folder back to being visible. So now this will only appear in the bounds of your asset. And this was a great asset that I found. It's a scan of a presidential seal. So I went ahead and put that over the folder and like our PDF scans with the white background, we can just set it to multiply and it will get rid of the background. And like the previous asset, if we use the track mat to link it to the folder, it will now only show up where the folder is. In the effects and presets, you can hit the fill effect and then you can just change the color of whatever you want it to be. And I kind of wanted everything to be a little bit more faded. So I would bring in like a faded red with the fill effect. So right here, I used Photoshop to cut out an image of a paperclip and I put the paperclip somewhere over here to justify having some paper on the inside of this folder. And then to make the labels on the folders, I brought in another asset that I had uh, got from Adobe Stock. So I'd use masks to get rid of all the information that I didn't want. So now I'm left with this. We're gonna go back to the effect extract and bring down the whites so everything left in this image is just the black border. I'll make the name the same as the video. I'll do option one. And the font that worked really well for this is called Tudor Victors. And I got this on defont.com for anyone who's curious, so it's free. So on Adobe Stock, you can see here, I downloaded some really like torn up or textury paper textures. What I'm gonna try and do is match it to the size of my folder. And then with this, I'm gonna set it to screen. So now if I just play around with the size of this texture, I can make it fit the borders of my folder to give it that extra grunge. In the effects and presets, I'll type in tint, and you can change the white to like a darker, lighter color that matches the folder. I wanted to get a little more splatter around the border, so I brought this graphic back up and I created a mask around this classified thing right here. And I created a second mask to get rid of everything I don't want, which I'll set to subtract. We use extract to get rid of the whites in this image. So now we just have this asset that's a splattery border. And once we properly place that, Bam, now our border is even more grungy. And now to connect everything together, let's make sure that we have all of our assets that we've put on top of this folder selected. Uh, and what we're gonna do is grab the parent and link, and now we're going to bring it to the actual folder itself. So now we have this perfectly texturized folder that we can open. So what I did for the inside of the folder is I actually grabbed the rectangle tool and I created a big mask inside of it. I set the mask to subtract and I basically used the white whiteness of the background we already created as the paper for the text that I would eventually put inside there. And because I want to pan from the left to right to reveal this folder, you'll notice that the background kind of runs out of space and you see the alpha channel. If you go to effects and presets and type in repetile, so like right now I have repetile on the background and if I set it to unfold and expand left, it's just gonna fill up all of that space. So now our grungy background is large. So now we can animate the camera to fly from the left to the right, revealing the folder. So if you hit Shift, Control, Alt, Y, you'll create a new null object, which I'm gonna make 3D, and then I'm gonna link the camera to this null. So now I can move my camera around with this null object. Create a keyframe here while the folder is in the center of the frame, and then I'll go over to the beginning of the composition, and I'll grab my null that's controlling the camera and pan it to the left. Of course, we'll grab these keyframes and we'll easy use them. And for the first keyframe, I'm starting it high on the speed graph, so it starts fast and in slow. So this here is our animation. It looks too clean. What I did for every single animation I made for Michelle, so I actually went to composition, composition settings. I changed the frame rate from 23 to 12. So now it's gonna be moving at 12 frames per second and it kind of gives it this old school look, which is way more in tune with like the old documents vibe. So this is 12 and this is 24. Here they are together and you can notice the, the difference there. So once we arrive at the folder, now that everything is linked to this folder, we can create a keyframe for the Y rotation. And as soon as we see the folder, we can animate that to open up and disappear behind the folder, just like this. Of course, we'll easy ease those keyframes 
names. So now we arrive on the folder and then it opens. And you can see that these assets somehow bleed into the back of the folder. So this moment right here, right before the page turns to the inside, I'm just gonna create a jump cut for all the things that are attached to that folder and delete them. And so now when it opens, you don't see it on the other side of the folder. And now we'll continue the camera movement by hitting Shift, Control, Alt, Y to create another null object, set it to 3D, and we'll attach the null to it. So now our new null is controlling the first null that we created so we can add a new camera movement without messing up the first null. So I'll create a position keyframe from where we land on the folder. And I'm using the camera to zoom into the center of this folder until the borders of this folder are completely gone. And so now you can see we have this beautiful animation and then when the folder opens, the camera is gonna zoom in on the inside. So once we're right here, I'll grab my text tool and I'll type in small scale attack. So now when it zooms in, you can just make sure that your text is right in the center. And I grabbed more um, PDFs that I had downloaded from earlier, like this one right here, because you can see it has this really nice scanned texture border with these scanned paper clips. And I just put them inside the folder. Remember, we set this to multiply, so just the black parts show up. You can see here, I'm basically creating a border that we zoom in on with this. So now when our folder opens, we'll just zoom straight into the small scale response and we get this cool texture by adding the scanned paper clips and border here. I'll actually duplicate this um, scanned document right here and I'll flip it 180 degrees so we can get this right side to have this texture border as well. And I'll actually just mask that out as a single item so we don't get some overlap with the extra paper clips. Now we'll bring the side up like that. Now you can see on both sides of this folder, we have this nice, textury scan look. And to fill up all the negative space that's left at the bottom of this folder, I'll grab a PDF that's like filled with text, kind of like this, set it to multiply. So now when the folder opens, it looks like an actual document and we're just zooming into the custom part that we wanna see. And what I'm doing to make sure that this isn't distracting, like summary of conclusions concerning whoever, I'll take all the pieces that we're not looking at and I'm using the camera lens blur effect to make it blurry. So. So you get the scanned look of this being a full document, but now this down here is blurry, so we're just looking at the small scale response. And now I'll talk about how I did the highlighter effect. So in the Adobe stock website, I found this great highlighter asset, and I resized it to be as big as the word we want highlighted, just like this. In the effects and presets, I used the fill effect to make it red. So what I ended up doing is I used the linear wipe effect in your effects and presets panel, set it to negative 90, and and then I animated the linear wipe transition to start at 100. And over a few frames, I would animate it to be zero. So as we zoom in, it's highlighting the text. And I don't like this hard edge, so in your linear wipe, you can just crank up the feather a bit, like this. And you can easy ease the linear wipe. So now when the folder opens, we zoom in on small scale and the highlighter goes like this. We can duplicate that highlighter asset we just animated and bring it onto our uh, second line here. And once the second highlighter is resized uh, how you like it, we can just move over the linear wipe keyframes. And so it starts and ends on the second word, just like that. Now it looks beautiful. And of course, one of the juiciest details we haven't added yet is selecting everything and selecting motion blur. And now with the motion blur, it looks so nice. And then one of the final touches that I added was I could create an adjustment layer with the camera lens blur effect on it. I'll use the ellipse tool and create a big focus spot and I'll hit, oh. I'll hit subtract and I'll feather this mask up. And what I'll do is I'll animate this from zero. And once we're fully zoomed in on the text, I'll increase the camera lens blur to like seven. Now there's some nice juicy depth to everything. The end of the paperclip is in focus while the top of it is blurry. You just now have this really nice depth animation. And then you throw on a few different dust and scratches video assets to blend everything together and give it an extra grungy look. And that ladies and gentlemen is how I made these graphic animations for Michelle Carey's new video. I think I'm gonna do a part two of this tutorial to talk about how I made some of the other animations in her video, so stay tuned for that. But these animations I made for Michelle are some of my best work ever, and it was super cool working with a huge YouTuber. I hope you enjoyed this little After Effects motion graphics breakdown. My name is Will Carmack, and I'd like to introduce you to my sugar daddy, Squarespace. For online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is your best option for making a website. If you want incredibly customized and personal 
personalized website? Well, you're in luck because with Squarespace's new design system, Squarespace Blueprint, you'll be able to select from professionally curated templates. So you'll be able to pick a design that is good for your vibe or brand. And with their optimized SEO tools, you'll be able to get discovered way faster and way easier. And let's say you're a business person and you've got products you wanna sell. And with Squarespace's flexible payments, you'll be able to accept every form of currency, Apple Pay, credit cards, PayPal. You'll even be able to use pay later features. So your online store can sell your goods and you'll be able to make it as convenient as possible for your customers. And lastly, if you don't want to rely on just the professionally designed templates that Squarespace offers, Squarespace's Fluid Engine lets you edit and customize from your launching off point. So you can use one of these templates as your starting point. And then from there, use all of the incredible editing tools that Squarespace offers for you to make every page look exactly how you like. And everybody, the best part is I got you a discount discount code. So if you go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack, you'll be able to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace. I hope you all check them out. And don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.